from the Norman P. Murray Community Center in Mission Viejo. It's Breakfast with Gary and Kelly, with special guests, author and actress Linda Evans, and jazz musical great Max Bennett. Welcome back to uh, Breakfast with uh, Gary and Kelly. Our, Gary, uh, I'm Kelly. That's, that's exactly right. I, that's right. I always get those two Don't mixed forget. up, too. We are, uh, our first guest today is, uh, is a gal that we've seen in so many different <sighs> things for so yes. long. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and she's now got a book out to uh, tell us how she got to all those great places. And recipes. <laughs> food, it Don't always comes back recipes. to the food. Exactly right. Please welcome Linda Evans, everybody. Yes. Hey. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hello. Have a yes. seat. Have a seat right here. <laughs> as sweet as this. So, Black, we got, you got what the memo. <laughs> you got the memo. <laughs> Thank dark you for colors, us. dark colors, huh? What can oh, I? Oh man, we're gonna try a little double mic just little because. Double mic. That's okay. right. Be on the same only side. the very important people get two mics. You know, okay. <laughs> that's why go. Kelly and I just have one each. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Thanks my for being pleasure, here. My pleasure. to be here. This is with uh, all of you in this wonderful weather. It it's fitting? not like this in Seattle where I yeah, come from. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's not been too bad though, has it? No, oh, no, no. It's kind of rainy right now, isn't it? It's not like this. No, 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 no. This is nice. This is, uh, first of all, you really kind of scrambled to get this available for us for this weekend, did you not? Yes, and I'm really thrilled you got them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. It's, it's, it's a great thing. What, uh, what brought the book on? Why, why uh, now? Well, it was a senior moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're at the right place I'm then. <laughs> Who are you again? <laughs> um, I was 65 and I said, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? And I thought, hmm, why don't I take the thing that I love so much, which is food. Mm -hmm. I adore eating, I adore cooking, and I adore people. And I loved, I looked back at my life and I thought, I've had an incredible life. I don't want to write a memoir. That's sort of boring from here to there to there. So I took the memories. And I took the people and the food, and I had this wonderful realization after, after Dynasty, and I left and went to have my life in Washington State, which is that the best things in life are free. Food, mm-hmm. family, cooking, yeah. sharing. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh my God, it's so sweet that I've gone through my whole life mm-hmm. and found out that everybody has everything that they could possibly want. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really true. F- food memories are really strong oh, ones yeah, yeah. too, aren't they? And yeah. sense and songs, and yeah. they're the senses. Songs, eating, touching, feeling, they all bring out the senses. And how you wind your stories around the food is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's it took easy. a while, but <laughs> <laughs> it took a while, but it's done. How long did it take? I, since well, f- almost four years. Oh, is that right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was because I didn't know how to do it. I knew what I wanted to do, but yeah. I didn't have a map. Yeah. for how to do it and it was a really exciting journey and you know what I hope everybody here writes their life down mm-hmm. I'll tell you why when you look back at your life and you get a perspective from where you are right mm-hmm. now you can see so many things that you lived that maybe at the time you thought were a disaster <laughs> or the worst thing that ever happened to your life and you go wow that was the best thing that ever happened to me because that kicked me over to here and then yeah. that happened yeah. and so you kind of look back at your life and change mm-hmm. a lot of how you saw your life. It's really kind of extraordinary. Yeah. T- tell us about your, your parents. They, they, oh, yeah. They, they, there's great stuff in the, in the book about them, and obviously, as is the case with everybody, I mean, they played a, a huge role, but, but it really neat stories. It really neat stuff. Well, my mom and dad were professional dancers, mm-hmm. and um, they did the tango and all these <laughs> romantic things, and I have pictures of them in yeah. their outfits. It, very exciting, but when uh, I have an older sister, Charlie, and I'm a year and a half after her, when when I was born, they decided they couldn't really be on the road dancing with the two of right. us. So my mom retired, and we moved. We were on the East Coast. We moved. Actually, we're from Minnesota, but oh, there was you born go. on the East Coast. And I was we say, went. This is like Scandinavia is on parade up here oh, right now. Yeah, Ferguson, <laughs> Peterson. Oh, yeah, okay. It's like, there you go. And we're all going to be flaming red from the sun because of it, I'm sure. That's true, right? Yeah, exactly. If I have my sunblock on. I do have an umbrella. That's okay. <laughs> Let's just do it. A little sun will be good for me. Exactly. So um, we went, uh, moved to California, and um, 
just had this kind of normal, regular mm -hmm. life, uh, but not quite so normal because uh, if I hadn't been in California, if I hadn't gone to Hollywood High, I yeah. would never have right. had the career that I had because I only wanted to get married and have children. Right. I had every woman's and, dream. And how you got started was from going to a friend's audition, just sitting yes. there? I was with a girlfriend. Well, firstly, in junior high school, I was so shy that I wouldn't get up in class and give a book report, so they were going to flunk me unless I took acting drama school. <laughs> really? And they said to my mom, if she'll take that, we won't flunk her. So next thing I knew, I was in drama school, and I hated it. I would throw up before they'd ask me to get on. I thought, oh, this is the worst <laughs> thing in the world. I, I did a play, and I it was Sleeping Beauty, and I was Sleeping Beauty, and oh, thank I God, because I slept through the whole play. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really great. But... Um, like my girlfriend <laughs> was up for a, a commercial, and I went with her, and there were like 50 girls. So, like, hours later, they got down to seeing her, yeah. and the director came out, and he said, I'll see you. And he pointed uh -huh. to me, and I said, oh, I'm not here. Uh -huh. I'm just visiting with her. She'll go in. She went in, and she said, he wants to see you. I said, why does he want to see me? She says, go in there and talk to him. So I went in, and he said, I want you to do this commercial. I said, I can't do a commercial. He said, why? I said, well, I don't know how to do a commercial. He said, can you sit on a merry-go-round, drink ginger ale with the guy standing next to you? I said, well, yeah, I could, but my girlfriend would kill me. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. And he said, look, if you do this commercial, I promise you that I'll give your friend a commercial at another time. Now, my dad... The first of many Hollywood lies you ever heard, probably. No, he did. He did, did he really? He did. He did. He did. Oh, Gerald Schnitzer wonderful. was his name, and he did it. Wow. And um, my dad had died about five months earlier. By surprise, we, we were all thrown by that. My mom was on Social Security. There was mm. no way oh, I could say no. Yeah. Mm. I mean, everything oh, yeah. in me said... I'm too afraid and to do this. How much do you want to pay me? <laughs> and they were going to give us money, and I could yeah. contribute to my family. So yeah. I did the commercial. He did give my friend Carol a commercial, and she gave me her agent. And the agent said, do you think you can walk and talk and say lines? I said, I did a silly play in junior high school. I don't know if I'll be any good at it. So mm -hmm. he sent me out for my first speaking part which was Bachelor Father with John Forsyth. Oh, that's so funny. That's I mean, amazing. I remember the world. Oh, so Got it. My first part that I went wow. out for, I starred in it with him. It was called Crush on Bentley. And in it, I had a crush on him. Oh. And I was his niece, which was another 15-year-old. Um, in the end, he fixed me up with a football player and in the show. <laughs> and he wrote on my, my little script that I had, Linda, you're going to be somebody someday. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Is that and right? And I pulled that out like the third year of Dynasty. Oh. I, found it. I said, Sean, I can't what believe you, you waited said. three years to show Well, I didn't it. even remember yeah. I had it until we went oh, through a bunch man. of stuff. Oh. That's amazing. Do you ever I hear know. from Carol? I saw her mm, about 15, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah. How's she doing? She's doing good. Yeah. She's yeah. doing good. Like all of us, her life went in this direction, that yeah. direction. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How fun. You were wow. in beach blanket bingo. <laughs> oh, it's a, I mean, that's, I want to hear. I want to hear. People, oh, okay, on. well, <laughs> whenever any of my friends call me up on the phone and they start laughing and then they say, you'll never guess what I'm watching, I oh, always no. know it's beach blanket bingo. <laughs> I mean, at the time, it was like the blessing of all time because it was a movie with mm. Annette oh, Funicello. Of course. And we, I had no sense that it was going to be what it was, yeah. <laughs> and that it would go on through time is such a joke. But it's hysterical. I mean, I'm thrilled that I did oh, it. It's, it's just, you know, we'd go to work, and we'd have our little bikinis mm -hmm. on, and we'd put our hands out, and they just spray tannis oh. everywhere. And it was just like, oh, my God, wow. this is Hollywood. This is <laughs> the movies are <laughs> sprayed. A singing role, no less. Yeah. Well. A singing role, and I don't sing. See, how, I don't you know, sing, you know. and it's I've done like three or four parts where I sing, and they have this wonderful Hollywood trick where they lip sync you. You they record somebody records the song, and then you right. kind of go like this, and lip then <laughs> I do that very well. <laughs> yeah. so I don't you sing. sing? <laughs> the only song I sing is "Happy Birthday, Mr. President" by Marilyn Monroe. Oh. That's the only song I can sing, and I will sing that. 
Really? And in front, yeah, but I will not say anything else. Ask him. He, I, I, for me she, to say. She, she does a better version if she's got a three or four Rob Roy's in her. Than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know. <laughs> What's in a Rob Roy? I have no idea. No, I don't know. Oh, exactly. oh it's a drink. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly. joking. He's joking. Oh, exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. What, how, well, how long? I mean, what do you remember from doing the, the, that movie? I mean, that had to be uh, very early. I mean, a couple days. How long was it? Were you in the whole thing? Beach oh, Blanket yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Well, no, I was in one. They have a series of, yeah. of, of them, but I was only in one of the movies. Oh, but that, that whole experience, though, that had to be just crazy. I mean, did, it, were, did, were you uncomfortable, or did you get comfortable doing it? Or? I mean, oh, in a bathing suit, too. Yeah, they, they made you feel very comfortable. It wasn't that. I mean, my first scene, I um, jumped out of an airplane and into the ocean and got up on the beach and started singing. So, I mean, it wasn't dull. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't dull. But okay. <laughs> but Jump shortly up. after that, Big Valley came along. So yeah. it was like, oh, my God, life is kind. Yeah, no doubt. D yeah. Barbara Stanwyck. Wow. I mean, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Right. And, and a huge influence on you. Yes. I mean, in so many ways, right down to the... You know the stunts that that uh, that she did and you you did as right. well that led to the to the great dynasty cat fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to start somewhere. Exactly. In the exactly. wild west. In Get, the wild west. Tell us about Barbara Stanley. Oh, I feel so fortunate to have had my first television series be with such a legend. I mean, she was just an amazing woman, and of course you see her in movies and you see her. On television and she's bigger than life and the first time that I met her I came on the set and she walked up and she's actually kind of short and <laughs> that just shocked me because she looks so big and she has such yeah. presence that I was waiting for this huge person right. to come in and then this woman walked up and I mean I couldn't have had a better mentor because she really helped me understand what it was like to be a professional she really wow. helped me understand the movie mm -hmm. business and how to be in it and have respect for myself and everybody else in it. So it was tremendous. And from the minute that I met her, she called me mom. I mean, she called me Audra. She uh, never called me Linda, really? ever, ever, ever once. Audra. Hmm. In our entire yeah. relationship, she called me Audra. And uh, she'd say, I'm gonna teach you how to be a professional, Audra. You show up on time and you know your lines. I said, okay, I'm gonna do that. And um, my mom died during mm. Big Valley. And uh, she came to me and she said, uh, I'll never ever replace your mom. But she said, I'll be there for you. And she put her arms around Aww. me and she was there. Wow. How sweet. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Linda Evans is our uh, guest this morning. We're thrilled to have her. We're gonna take a break and come back and chat a little bit more. Linda Evans here on Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. We are, uh, we are back on Breakfast with Gary and Kelly here from the, uh, the Village Green. And the at, uh, grassy knoll. Outside the Norman P. Murray <laughs> Community Center. That's right. Our personal tanning salon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, joined uh, this morning by Linda Evans, who is, uh, you're really just kicking off this, this tour. Yeah, this You've is got the first uh, one, right? whirlwind a uh, couple of six weeks or so coming up, huh? Right. This and, we is get, and we get first, first dibs on the you. First, there we the go. First. We, we got, appreciate first look, it. You're highly yeah. recommended. Robert Wagner said, go, go. Oh, You'll love it. You'll love it. Oh, very nice. That's really nice to hear. The book, uh, Recipes for Life, and uh, there are copies here for uh, for those of you that want to grab it and uh, after, the, after the fact and get a little mm -hmm. uh, little signature, you're going to be... Uh, I want it for the recipes, actually, because I was reading some of cook? it. Well... Um, That's why she needs the recipes. <laughs> that really, she... I, I am very... I'm, I am a good cook, but a lot of people don't think so. <laughs> so Just the people that eat the stuff she cooks no, think that. I don't people, know why. People it's... on this stage sometimes think I don't. No, cook it's, very well. a, it's so a game. I like to it's cook. So I have it's an a actual show. I actually have a show um, during our broadcast called Cooking with Kelly and it's one minute recipes for those on the go. Oh. So like I do like really quick stuff like uh, chocolate cake in a cup. You know, poor man's ambrosia salad. Where oh you can actually God. make it in your car. Fabulous. You know, stuff like that. Do you I, have you your, your own cookbook? No, not yet, but I well, you'll eventually. I'll have one. It's a, it'll be a book of, of anecdotes, really. <laughs> be nice. I am. I'm trying. I know. Oh so, yeah, trying. that's what I'd love to talk about is your recipes, because every one of those recipes that are in your book have something to do with your life, and it's just so amazing. The hot dog stew. 
amazing, amazing hot dog scope. It I is. thought that was real. And the fish tacos. Hello, I love <laughs> fish tacos. So what are some of your favorites? Well, what I tried to do <laughs> in this is have something for everybody, mm -hmm. whether you cook just a little or you really know how to cook. And I wanted recipes for that everyone could afford mm -hmm. and that they could do. And so it took that's why it took so long to select. I love to cook because I love the way people respond when you give them something yeah. to eat. Mm -hmm. The look on their face when you make something that's really great is mm -hmm. so incredible. It gives me so much. I don't care if I'm two days getting ready for it and I it's that, oh my God, what is this? That is amazing. I put every recipe that makes people go, oh my God, what is this in there? Because I just wanted to give them things that they would know, mm -hmm. that they would love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's in the recipe. I know. If you They're get a good jokes. Recipe, They're just you jokes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> talk, talk, tell us about Dynasty. That, what a great run that that thing was, and that had to be oh the dresses. That had the to hair. be just nothing but fun. Oh. That was great stuff. I just that? watched it for the clothing. I mean, the clothes, the hair, the makeup. I mean, I was in a world all my own. Well, it was an answer <laughs> to prayer, certainly, because I had uh, just gotten my second divorce. I thought. Who am I? I'm supposed to be married and have children. What is, mm -hmm. what is my life? I thought, okay, I'm going to go have a career. I can't make this other thing work. And my agent said, well, you're 38. It isn't a little late for you to want a career? I thought, no, this is when mm -hmm. I want a career. And blessed be life, Dynasty came mm -hmm. and just answered every prayer I ever had in terms of being an independent woman for the rest of mm -hmm. my life. And, um, of course, to work with John Forsyth again. You know, John wasn't the original Blake Harrington. Really? Uh, George Pappard. Oh, is we that right? We did a pilot, huh. and George Pappard played Blake Harrington. Okay. And then George Pappard and the network decided they didn't want to do it. And they, what a lucky they hired yeah. John Forsyth. We went back up uh, to film, and the first day I saw him, it was a scene where we were to get married. And he walked on the set and he said, my little Linda Evanstead, how you've grown. <laughs> really? <laughs> he didn't he did remember. He remember. And then he said, how is your mother Arlene? Oh, oh because my mom really? had to come on the set with me because I was 15. You couldn't yeah. work yeah. without your parent being there. Right. I thought, oh my God, it's going to be so easy to love you in this show. Yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> good. He's really good. No, he, he was even better than good. Wow. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that something? I can't, yeah. well, you can't even imagine anybody else in that role. I can't either. Yeah. I can't yeah. either. So the hair, the makeup, I mean, the big hair, is it coming back? Oh, I don't know. Seriously. I mean, because I heard that the, because every time I used to go into the hairdresser, I'd say, I just want my hair like the girls off Dynasty. Just <laughs> do it that way. And I go, okay. So now I hear because of the everything comes back, they're going to be doing the Dynasty hair now. One day it'll come back, shoulder pads will come oh, back. Oh, yeah, they'll do it all. It's all yeah. cyclical. It all. Cyclical. Yeah. No but what a blessing for Nolan Miller. They hired Nolan Miller to do the mm. clothes for us. And we could, I mean, no one on television before or since has had such a budget for wardrobe. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, it was every woman's dream where I could ah. choose anything I wanted from any store. Vogue magazine or Harper's Bar said, I want that, make me that, and if you can't get it, then you make it. It was like, oh my God. <laughs> wow. It was the what, most what's extraordinary. The, the, the wonderful story about you, the, the scene that you had rehearsed with Forsyth, where he's carrying you up the staircase. Uh. And then you go to do the take with the with the gown on that weighed what thirty pounds because of all the beads, and all of a sudden he he couldn't get you up there, huh? I know, crazy. He, he was he was actually stunned because we'd rehearsed it all morning, and he we was to, okay, right? We went to lunch. We, we rehearsed. We came in our jeans. He picked me up, carried me up the staircase like in Gone with the Wind, you know. Uh, it was very romantic, and yeah. we did it. And they said, okay, come back after lunch, and you can. You can film it. So I got dressed and I came out in this Nolan Miller beaded gown and he had his tuxedo on and he was always so polite and always told me how wonderful I looked and the director said action and he picked me up and we fell right to the floor. <laughs> and he looked at me, he was shocked and he said, what did you have for lunch? <laughs> and I thought, 
I remember, was like, what did I have for lunch? <laughs> you know, and then they found out because the dress was 25 pounds of beads. Oh, wow. Then it, it, so then they went, change your dress. Oh, <laughs> so man. I put on a lighter beaded dress that had teeny ones, but oh. I mean. Styrofoam beads. I, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want who to... knew? I mean, who would know? Oh, God, uh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. T talk about the, the cooking show in, in uh, England, too. You're, you're great. I mean, that's, you know, there you go. Well, I'm, I'm into having adventures. I figure if we're living to be 80, 90 years of age, let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. So I've decided to mix it up. There you go. <laughs> mix it up and do things that I've never done before. And they called me and said they wanted me to do a reality show that was a cooking show. Now, I didn't watch reality shows, so I didn't really know what that meant for yeah. sure, mm -hmm. except they were going to film us 24 hours a day. But they said three sh world-class chefs with Marco Pierre White, who was a three-star chef, and they were gonna be cooking all day, my dream, my oh, dream, yeah. chain me to the stove, <laughs> let me just cook. And they were gonna teach me, have me come to London, England, and, yeah. and if I uh, was kicked off the show, I would go to the Dorchester and just hang out till they finished the show. I thought, how bad could that be? Exactly. Well, I went, but oh my God, oh my God, you know. <laughs> but you they the lock cut. you up. Yeah. And 24 7, they had like 300 cameras on you, and you could, when you went from your bedroom to the bathroom, they filmed you in the morning. It was oh, like, man. what is this that I've gotten myself into? The nicest people, though, we had the greatest celebrities from mm -hmm. all over that we worked with. And I had the best time. It just was an outrageous, outrageous experience. And then miracle of miracle, I won. I mean, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I won. Say it. That? it was well, like, oh my God. That. It was like, well, talk about a dream come true. Yeah, what'd you win? I won, that's all, you just win. Did you win like a mirrored ball or anything? No, <laughs> you just get it. Oh, didn't they do a, a contribution to a, a charity or something, I think, in your no. name or something like that? No, no nothing. 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 I well, got, well, that's I, like being on this show, because you don't win a damn thing here either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> now, we have a basket. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got, that's right. I I sunscreen, maybe. Yeah, sunscreen, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I like the story about Circus with the Stars, though. Oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. The Circus with the Stars story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, okay. From the, see. it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> but I what was a, I doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a friend, Bunky. She's my oldest, dearest friend. She's absolutely outrageous. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I say outrageous, I was kind of hoping to see Bunky walk in here with you today. Oh, for me, me too. I know, I'd love I to meet wish, her. I wish she could. I, you'd all be just having the ball with Bunky. But she always encouraged me to do things that were out of the box and right. kind of shocking because yeah. she liked to have fun and laugh. <laughs> and they offer, They wanted me to do Circus of the Stars. She says, yeah, but you're not doing any stinking poodle act. I don't want you doing something boring. You have to do something really exciting. <laughs> I said, okay. Poodle act. So, That's what we have up next, by so, the way. No, not really. <laughs> no, you don't? I mean, no, we don't. I know. No, he's not. He's a talented, he extraordinary is, man. Right. So, <laughs> I'll pay for that. So they well. searched around for a few months, and they came up with this thing about me doing an a act with a leopard. And it was like, okay, this will be fun. This will be fun. So we flew to the Midwest to meet mm -hmm. Sheba and her trainer. <laughs> Sheba. And, Someone's uh, tame enough. <laughs> and I watched, yeah. watched her go through her things and jump through. The, and she had me come later and she'd jump through the hoops and I would say, jump and do this, Sheba. And Sheba made me really look good. So I thought, okay, this will be great. Bunky says, that's it. That's what I want that's you to do, something like that. So we got home, and months later they came uh, for me to rehearse with Sheba so they could film it. And the day came, and I said to Monkey, let's go, we're rehearsing. And she says, oh, no, 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 it's 102 degrees outside. It's, I've got to stay in here and make some phone calls. And I thought, yeah, the air-conditioned <laughs> house. She, yeah. she didn't want to go out in the heat. Yeah. So I went out without her to train Sheba. And instead of being in a tent, like when I first met her, they were outside in Calabasas and they set up some kind of little mm -hmm. Mickey Mouse yeah. things for us to do. And I came out and the trainer showed me how to do it. And I got my little whip and my thing and Sheba was up on a pedestal. Oh. And Sheba, jump. Sheba just looked at me like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, and she said, you have to take control. Oh God, famous right, last okay. words. <laughs> and I love animals. I don't kill a spider. I love animals. So she said, get strong. And I thought, okay, you can act. Sheba, jump. You know, she just looked at me again. She says, 
I'm sorry, but you're going to have to hit her with the whip. <gasps> she has to know who's in control. Oh, no. I thought, how come that was so easy there? Yeah, I know. So yeah. I don't oh, want to do that. So they had a little whip, and I saw her arm. So I said, Sheba, jump. Hit her on the arm here like this, whereby she was like up here. Oh, she Lordy. leaned down eye to eye, oh. looked at me and growled right in my face. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, I don't eat me. She said, this is the defining moment. You got to take control now or you're, this isn't going to oh work. Oh my God. Hit her again. <laughs> no. Hit her again. Oh, no. I said, oh my Hit God. her again. I thought, oh Great. My God. Okay. So I just took the whip and looked around the arm, whereby she jumped off, grabbed me by the chest, and nailed me to the ground. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and I'm on the ground. I wasn't quite certain what happened, because it happened so fast. Yeah. And I had worn a shirt that I just loved that said Rolls Royce on it. And she had eaten. The whole thing was gone. <laughs> when I got up, there was a hole in my chest uh -huh. right here. And everyone panicked. It was oh like World War II. I was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they took me gosh. to the hospital. I had a tetanus shot and they bandaged my chest. It turned black and blue. When oh, I say black no. and blue, it was dark. It was just the whole, because yeah. the weight of her when oh, she jumped came on me. Well, when we got back, I said, look, I'd like to work this out with Sheba because yeah, I really want to do the act, but I'm not going to hit her. We've got to find a way to do it. We went back. Mm -hmm. They'd left town because oh. <laughs> they'd left. So I went home. On the advice of Sheba's attorneys. <laughs> I went yeah. home, and Bunky is sitting in the, my air-conditioned house doing her little things on the phone. <laughs> and my chest is bandaged. My shirt is torn. And I walk in, and she goes, very funny, very funny. This oh, is a joke, you're, you're right? Because she's always pulling jokes. I said, Sheba. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she wanted to go find her and kill her. Kill her. Oh, yeah. man. Crazy, wow. crazy stuff. Uh, we are uh, out of time, but grateful, grateful okay. for you to uh, have shown up here today. The book, Recipes for Life. Yes. My memoirs from uh, Linda has Evans. So She'll many be here other later stories. On today. Thanks so much. My Thanks pleasure. so much. Good luck Thank with this thing. Really nice to meet you. Thank Linda you. Evans here on Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. We'll be back Thank in a minute. Thank you. It's Breakfast with Gary and Kelly here on FM 88.5 KSPR. A little, uh, little Max Bennett music I was hearing. Was there. that uh, Max was Bennett? That, uh, I don't know. Kevin really? Mellon for some reason because <laughs> here he is right here with us, everybody. Max Bennett. We're glad Yay. to have you. How's it going, baby? Yeah. How are you? Very good. Fine, fine. You're, uh, it's blazing hot out here, ain't it? And nice you're right warm. in the sun. Nice and warm. Well, it's as right. it should be. I need a tan. You're in the hot seat. I need exactly. a tan. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thanks for coming, man. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. You, uh, your website rocks. It does. It really does. When Thank you first you. put it out. Your website is unbelievable. Maxbetter.com. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. It is. The photographs. It is great. Finally, the photographs. finally. Yeah. Rick did a lot of work. Yeah, Rick Alonso, he's a, a graphic artist, dear friend of mine. He researched for probably at least a year, I know. Sure. And he put the whole thing together. It's beautiful. He did, did a great job. Did he find a lot of that stuff you had kind of stashed away? Or I had did a, he? I'm derelict as far as keeping things about my past. Uh-oh. You know, <laughs> you never know what I might want to throw away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had a box, and I'd thrown stuff in there, so he took the box home and use what he thought would be good, for yeah. it, you know. But he did a lot of research and researched pictures and everything from different people. He did a great job. Oh my wonderful. God, he sure did. That one, that one, well, there's a lot of pictures up there that I hadn't seen before. Yeah. The, but the one with uh, Sinatra and Ella sitting oh, side yeah. by side, what is that from? That's the TV show. I was working with Ella at the time. I, actually, I worked with both of them from time to time. They but did. but uh, in this particular case, it was Frank's TV show and Ella was a guest. So oh. the trio that she uh, played with, Lou Levy and me and Gus Johnson, we played behind it for that particular TV show. Yeah. How long did you work with her? <clears throat> uh, Ella? Yeah. Uh, about a year, maybe 15 months, something like that. I had been with Peggy Lee before that, uh, 56 through 50, yeah, right. 58, well, uh, up to, to uh, 58. Then I went with Ella. And then about uh, 15 months later, I went back and worked with Peggy until about 62 or so. I was already in the studios. I was so busy. I, I couldn't work. I couldn't go on a road where, anymore. Well, wait then. a minute. Go back for, for a minute. Okay. Where, where, where did you start? What was your very, very first gig? I mean, how did you get to be uh, Max Bennett in the bass? Well, I was playing in high school and I was playing guitar 
badly because I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So uh, I'm dating myself, but it's cool. That's okay. On VJ Day, we had this big celebration in this little town I was from, Oskaloosa, Iowa. Uh -huh. And on one side of the square, they roped everything off and had sawdust on the cement and and uh, the high school band played and I'm chunking away on my guitar. A guy came up behind me and said, I'm a bass player and I just moved to town. And uh, could, we, could I sit in? He said, sure. So we got the music and he stood behind me and I heard the feel and the sound of the bass and it blew my mind. Wow. The next day I ran down to the high school Picked up a string bass. That was it. Never yeah. Really? Back. Was and it I, a stand-up bass or a stand-up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Luckily, I gave the guitar up. Okay. You know? Good. Yeah. Did they even <laughs> seriously? Were they even making electric basses then, or no? No, no. Yeah. This was. I played. Uh, we call it four on the floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty yeah. easy instrument to learn. No. No. No instrument is easy to learn. <laughs> well, no, because the only reason no. why I say that is because when I was in junior high and we had to like pick an instrument. Yeah. My girlfriend picked the bass, and she said because that's the easiest instrument for her to learn and she was a little thing yeah. and she would carry this big stand-up bass all over the place right. and I picked the clarinet and I'm like <laughs> I just stick it in my pocket. They're all hard in their own way. You have to remember playing the bass is one thing but having great time and playing in a rhythm section yeah, exactly. which is something that none of the horns do Okay. because you're playing each and every beat of uh, every tune. Okay. So that gives you a lot more responsibility and if you don't have good time it really doesn't make any difference how good you are facility-wise. Okay. If you don't have good time, you can forget it. But if you got good time, it's... Then you put the whole thing together okay. and uh, hopefully you'll get So you're kind of like the work. beat with the drums. Exactly. Ah. You have to lock in with the drums, okay. for sure, yeah. Uh, wow. Particularly, particularly in current music, like in rock and things like that, because the bass drum, usually the bass, the electric bass will lock in with the bass drum. Sure. And that kind of gets the feel going. So your first gig, your very, very first paying gig, the first paying gig was when I was in high school. Okay. We played at a uh, the uh, Oddfellows Hall. Okay. And we had the, the Oddfellows Hall. The, the Oddfellows Hall. It's a. How am I not a member of that club? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> Let's actually. ask around. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe we can form one here. Yeah. Anybody? Why not? But uh, yeah, it was a high school, and, and uh, we played there. We had a cop at the door, and I think it cost. It was pretty cop expensive. I think it cost fifty cents to get in. <laughs> Oh, it's you the know. Oddfellows Club. But, yeah, who, do they, right. who do you keep out? Who does the cop keep out? I'm sorry, you're not out enough. Uh, <laughs> no one, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. And we had the, the red lights and the blue lights. You know, we were really cool. Nice, you know? nice. Yeah, and then from there, I went to college for two years in, at the uh, University of Iowa, just long enough to know that I didn't belong there. So I called my folks and I said, I've got a job in Meridian, Mississippi with the guys from Des Moines that I knew. And uh, they said, okay, you got it. But they had always supported me. My mother yeah. supported yeah. me from day one. Uh, my dad actually was tone deaf, mm -hmm. and he would feel yeah. happy, and he's around singing in the house. You know, my mom would say, Carl, please, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop, quit singing. So, but, but uh, she, oh, she, wow. ordered, she supported me in everything I ever did. Yeah. Used to come on wherever I was on the road with Kenton's band and our other band. She would show up and hang out with us, it was great. Very great. Cool. We, t tell me, it, it, one of the really interesting and amazing things about you to me is, is how you went from, and, and maybe you can clear up the timeline, but you know, Ella Fitzgerald and Peggy Lee and Sinatra to Frank Zappa. Well, yeah. that involved electric bass. Uh, I was working in the studios and playing string bass, and I went to a session to play, at those times they weren't sure how they wanted the rhythm section to sound because the, uh, the sound uh, stuff that they had wasn't as sophisticated. So uh, they would have string bass and maybe the electric bass too. Well, I went to this session and the guy couldn't read the charts that were playing electric bass. So they said, uh, can you play electric bass? Oh, sure, you know. So I borrowed his bass to play it. And then I thought, I might as well get one of my own. And the first job I ever played, real job, was with Hank Mancini. I was playing mm. string bass on stage and the Young Americans were the oh, opening wow. act, and I didn't want to take my string bass out from the, because it was like a, a lot of moisture in the air. So I played electric bass, and it was like an earn while you learn thing, you know. Really. Right. But that was my very first job on electric bass, and I just progressed from that point on, and and uh, what was tried to get better and better. What was Frank Zappa like? Great. Yeah. Uh, a taskmaster, uh, yeah. master in many ways, but uh, he, he really was, was a brilliant guy. Oh, he was. He was great, and. Uh, 
Some I of got his a, lyrics, I, I'm like, whoa. I know. <laughs> I got a call from John Guerin, a drummer, famous drummer, a friend yeah. of mine. We worked in the studios together. One night I, I had off at home. He called me, asked me if I was working, and I told him no. So he said, well, Frank Zappa, I, I was familiar with Frank, but I really didn't know his music that well. Yeah. He said, uh, we've got a record date, double record date for you. So I had my stuff delivered, and that turned out to be the Hot Rats album. But then later on when I moved down here, <laughs> I discovered that, that he had taken those, those uh, tracks and cut them and everything and made five different albums out of it. Oh, so, wow. That's fine. We got paid for it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you toured with them too, didn't you? For uh, it did a short tour. We worked the San Diego and a couple of other cities, plus uh, going uh, several things in LA. We worked uh, downtown at a big theater, and uh, it was a, a great experience. Yeah. Really. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And finally, I had to quit because I was just too busy working in the studios, and he wanted to rehearse. I actually did some rehearsals. Where when I finished at one in the morning at one thirty I'd be rehearsing. And it just, oh man! But I had to get up early, you know, because the studios start at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I, I just I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, crazy. So, but uh, Max Bennett is our guest here on uh, Breakfast with Gary and Kelly. We're going to take a quick break and and come back. Lots more to hear from uh, Max Bennett. Stick around. Breakfast with uh, Gary and Kelly here. We are back with uh, Max Bennett. Just interrupted a story. I hate to do that. Uh, we, uh, you know, hey, it's you. one of those off-air stories that uh, I know. Yeah, no, I don't know where we're really. going we with tell that. Everyone. Exactly. I know. Exactly. <laughs> the uh, our, our pal Eric out here wanted to definitely wanted to hear about Peggy Lee and, and Fever. It's a great. It's a great story. Fever. Fever. Come on. Well, please. I'm I, was with, I was with Peggy, <laughs> and we were working in Palm Springs. And uh, she decided to take a month, a, a year off from working. But before we finished that job, she told me that she was looking for a, some kind of a torch song. And if I heard of anything or knew of anything, to let her know. So I was working with a gentleman, uh, saxophone player, Nino Tempo, with a quartet. We were working on Western Avenue at a bar. Everybody knows about Western Avenue. Yeah, there you go. So this young boy came in and said, uh, can I sit in? There's a singer. We said, sure. What well, would you like to sing? And he said. I want to sing this tune called Fever. We'd never heard it. Well, how did it go? He said, there's only two chords. And so we played that, and I thought, perfect for Peggy. So I called Peggy, and she got the sheet music. But I didn't work on the first. Uh, Joe Mondragon, a friend of mine, did the first bass thing on that particular tune, because mm -hmm. I had left and gone with Ella Fitzgerald. Later on, uh, when we worked bass and treaties with Peggy, I got a chance to record it again. But. Uh, it turned out pretty good for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. So I think it's one of the most recorded tunes of that type. Yeah. Going. Who, who wrote the song? Two guys, and I don't remember their okay. name. Okay, because I was trying yeah, to remember, because I couldn't. Yeah. Worked out pretty well for them, too. Yes, for sure. She, yeah. she did write some extra lyrics at the end. The Captain uh, Smith and Luke Pocahontas, those were oh, her yeah. lyrics. Oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, there was a little... Uh, <laughs> disagreement I think with them about that particular tune. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to get credit for the lyrics and they didn't want her to. Uh, the smart money tells me that they should have said okay because yeah. she made it famous right. and up to that point it had gone nowhere. Exactly. So, you know, Did you ever hear from the guy that actually came in and sang it that last time? That first time? No, but, uh, and I cannot remember his name, I really didn't know, but I went to a, a, a meeting with some friends of mine on Sunday and one of the, the men there told me his name and said that he became pretty well known as a singer, but oh. I can't remember his name oh. at this point. That's funny. You you had such a great run uh, as a studio guy, and that that's a, I mean it's a great gig, but it's grueling stuff, isn't it? It's very exacting. Uh, when the red light goes on, there's no room for mistakes because if there's a mistake, they have to do it over, and if you're the one that makes a mistake, guys are looking like, mm -hmm. uh, you know. <laughs> Could happen to anybody that wasn't paying attention, you know, one of right. those things. Yeah. But uh, the, the guys that work in the studio are great, great players, and they, they, they can play anything. They're very adaptable to all different kinds of music. Yeah. It was a great career. I, I loved it. Partridge Family stuff, monkeys. Yeah. What else? Yeah, yeah, fun, but I mean, that's all great. Did you get to meet Davy Jones? Oh, heck, those guys probably yes, were I did. Really? They, no, yeah. nice. I did. That oh, is, how yeah. was that? It was fine. He's I was in love with him. Really? My, my Barbie doll loved David oh, Jones. Oh boy, he was my boyfriend. Seriously. Okay, D give, give us the, the the story about the the 
the the LA Express and how it came to be. It's it's uh, that it, it impacted so many people's lives. It did. Uh, I was working with Tom Scott. We we're both working in the studios, just to, you know, on a call for whatever yeah. whatever happened. So Tom called me on a Sunday afternoon. He was working at the Lighthouse in Hermosa Beach, and he had a quartet. Uh, and the the bass player was Chuck DeMonico, a great uh, upright player. And so he asked me, he said, Chuck couldn't do it, would I come down and play uh, this Sunday? And so I said, okay. I asked him, I said, okay, if I play electric bass, fine. So I took the very first tune I'd ever written, uh, his instrumental that I'd written, called TCB and E, Take Care of Business in a Key of E. And I went down, <laughs> and uh, it was Joe Sample, me, Tom Scott, and I think Ed Green was the drummer, but I don't remember. And so we started playing it, it just clicked. Something just happened, like, we've really got something here. So he asked me to come back the next week and play, and then we played a Thursday night, too, I think, there. Then we moved to the Baked Potato. And uh, Tom brought some tunes, and I brought some tunes, and we put it all together. But uh, that was just the quartet. Tom had had a, 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 his own quartet, but he, he didn't have a record contract at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we were working at the Baked Potato, I kept thinking, I want to do this double line with the saxophone and guitar. And I said, we need a guitar player. Well, it might take up all the space or something. And I said, let's give it a try. So we, we hired a certain guitar player and it didn't quite work the first time. And then one night, a, a Tuesday night, uh, we were with the baked potato and Larry Carlton walked in, sat in, that was it. Mm, that was I the band. Think. Larry and I were both also playing with the Crusaders band at the same time. So that, that was it. And so we started recording our album. Joni Mitchell came in to hear the band because oh. uh, Tom Scott had worked on, I think, for The Roses, was it? Mm, yeah. And so she said, well, would you like to do a couple of tunes on my next album? Ah. I didn't know who she was. I, really? I, I really didn't because I wasn't, that was more of a folk thing and I just wasn't into it. Yeah. So we said, oh yeah, that's fine. We, we're recorders, so we'll, you yeah. know, naturally we would we like to. So we get to the studio and she starts playing and it was so different. I'm looking at uh, Joe Sample and we're thinking, I don't know if this is going to work or not. But that was Court and Spark. <sighs> then we, then uh, we made a deal and we Court went on. Just for those that may not have that at the top of their head, Court and Spark included uh, Help Me. Yeah, Help Me. Uh, Free Man in Paris. Yeah, Raised on Robbery, I think. Was yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just went double doesn't, platinum. Doesn't get any went better. Double platinum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, double platinum. Yeah. Wow. Then we went on the road and did Miles of Isles. That was the live album was actually recorded uh, outside of Detroit. And uh, the picture is in the front is that. Uh, but then, uh, then we actually re recorded the music uh, at the Universal okay. outside. At that time, they had the stage outside. And so we did that album. Then we came back and we did Hissing and Summer Lawns okay. and then Hajira. And then uh, we kind of broke up and uh, LA Express had broken up by that time. But Tom had left the band to do his own thing. And, so, uh, were, were those were those things with Joni uh, just playing what she had in mind, or was it a, a real collaborative thing? They were all her tunes, but uh, of course she'd always uh, worked by herself. Yeah, and so we just made up the parts what we thought would work. And Tom wrote some skeleton charts too for mm. backgrounds and things yeah. like that. So, uh, but uh, we just kind of made up the parts and so mm. on. Uh, actually, I'm involved in uh, a group that's that's doing all of Joni Mitchell's things. Now I've been rehearsing them, trying to remember the tunes after 36 years. It's kind of tricky. <laughs> but it's great music, and uh, we it have a really concert with this, with this group uh, in, uh, by San, out by San Diego. I think it's uh, November the 6th on a Sunday. Hmm. So it's going to be great fun. Yeah. You know? Her but, guitar playing is so distinctive. There's nobody like it. There's no one, there's no one that I've ever heard that has the harmonic structures like she does. It's very elusive in many respects. It doesn't go like all the normal tunes you think would go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's totally unique. She's okay, a great so talent. I want to tell you, I, I first met you when I first started at the station in 1996. Did you really? Yes, and you yeah. were going up the stairs and I was going down the stairs. Yes. I think you were going into the radio station for an interview. Uh -huh. And at the time you had a ponytail. I did. When did you cut off that ponytail? The, the mullet went by. Because <laughs> I remember you always, and every time I saw you, you had this long ponytail in the back. I know. I'm I, thinking, when did you cut that ponytail I off? I finally uh, 
I thought when I cut it off, yeah, I'd lose all my strength, you know. But I guess, <laughs> uh, about about three or four years ago, I don't remember exactly. Really? When. Yeah, I, I'm done. What 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 made you do it? Just got up one day and thought, I've had enough. Did you save yeah, it? Yeah, right. Huh? Did you no, save I didn't. it? No, I save it. No, well, I didn't. What'd you do with it? I don't know. Uh, Give it to lots uh, of love or something. Yeah, or? I gave oh, it to my funny. wife. Yeah. yeah, some of those. Oh man, some of those bash pictures from uh, 20 years ago. I know. It is bullet fest. I know. You well, know? it was uh, it's great stuff. I liked it. Stuff. I think oh, you'd look yeah. good with it on. Okay. Still. Okay. Uh, now I have a beard. So it's there you go. Exactly. Got to be in vogue, you know. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that rough look. Huh? That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so you're out there still banging away. Well, here's the thing. Yes. This is the Reader's Fest. Yes. So take a hint. Write a book, would you? You have I've been, to. I've been, I've been threatening to do it for a long have. time. I know and, you uh, have. Rick is going to help me do that. A lot of the material, uh, if you go on the website, it's maxbennett.com, is on there, but we'll embellish. Uh, I need somebody to, to ask me about things like that because I will run up a, a brick wall when I'm just thinking about it. You know, sure. you run about. Can't you just record the stuff, the stories, well, and then give it to do. somebody to like that's, type it up? Because exactly. you've got so many memories, so many mem memorabilia. Yeah. This, this, the, the photos that you have. I better do it be before I lose my memory. I could see a really <laughs> nice, no, I could see a really Whoa. nice large coffee table book. Yeah, that, you know, exactly. Kind of like that's that. what it is. Yeah. We were thinking about even including a, uh, a CD, yeah. you know, a, vocal, a voice, not vocals. I don't sing. Well, maybe My some wife of your won't songs. Sing. Well, uh, <clears throat> I've been known to. No, not really. Really? No. <laughs> well, I, I have to tell you, I can't thank you enough yeah. for all the great support that you've given us over the years oh. in the bash. I, I, I really mean it. It is. You deserve it's it. It's just. It's yeah, a great station. Uh, and. Uh, you do great work. It really well, is in the bash. We couldn't do it without you, you know? musicians. Yeah, couldn't. exactly. Oh, no, right. It's, it's, a, it's, and, and it's always a pleasure. Yeah. And not I'm only that, but one of the great things for for me is that I get to see all the players that I never see during the year because right. they're off playing someplace, particularly bass players. Yeah. You don't usually see two bass players in the same job. Yeah, really. So it's great in that respect. We know? we always have a pretty much a world class percussion section. There's oh, yeah. no doubt about that. Oh yeah. There's no sure. doubt about that. For We've sure. had some great moments too with Sample and Scott both at the yeah. Bash. And Sample was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Pass that. Yeah, he's a great man. <laughs> yeah, he's a great man. Joe's a great he's player. A great we man. had a good time with yeah. that. Well, I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can get him in town and do an hour like this with you and he both, and, and maybe play get a little stuff. live playing out of you yeah. too. So yeah, we'd love to hear you play. Thanks for, thanks for being here. We are up again. Max Bennett, everybody, one of the, one of the real musical legends of our time. We are, uh, we are up against it, huh? It's a little after 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Gary Kelly from the uh, Village Green here at the uh, Norman P. Or outside of the Norman P. Murray Community Center. And the Readers beautiful. Festival, the third annual here in, in beautiful Mission Viejo. A gorgeous day. Absolutely gorgeous. And it's and it, it's always fun. It's always fun when we do these to have uh, David Don't Biber do come. Don't do that. And cook for us <laughs> right here as he's going to do it right now. David oh, Biber from Two Guys hey. Growing, everybody. Hooray! Clap your spatulas together. This because this is what? this portion of the show is called Ke Cooking for Kelly. Exactly right. Exactly okay, right. Because my regular cooking with Kelly, you have one minute recipes for those on the go. Really right. quick stuff. The entire show, of course, is just doing anything possible for Kelly. Exactly. <laughs> so, David Byron, we've got a recipe today that we are going to be doing. What is it? Actually, we're doing, going to do a breakfast pita. A breakfast pita. Take two. I love this pita because breads. every single. I thought that, never mind. I, I think was really I think the last three something. recipes that we've done involved pita bread. It makes it really easy. And it's easy. Kind of, pita bread is like the. <laughs> it's a point it's, of emphasis. It's like the food of all. You should always have pita in your it. fridge. It's the, uni it's the <laughs> universal food. He was food. joking. The universal food translator. Exactly. Pita can go with anything. So, yeah. Pita can go with so anything. It's called, Name what five is it, pita things pita, pita can go with. Well, no, th this is a breakfast pita. Okay, but what are we putting on the breakfast pita? Yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me that there. Just Thank you, sir. <laughs> Today, I did away. something a little special for you. Oh, wow. Look at this. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really difficult thing to do. What I did is that I opened a can of, pe of pears, can of poured pears. it into a bowl, 
Kelly can do grabbed that. Grabbed a handful with of... With the juice or without the juice? With the juice. With the juice. Just pour it in. Everything. And then I grabbed a handful of dried uh, cherries, dried threw them cherries. in there, and let it sit. See? Ah. The, the, the pear juice actually rehydrated Ooh, the, cherries the cherries and made what is called, in most restaurant circles, a compote. This is oh, a refrigerator a compote? compote. Yes, a compote. So if you would have used like real cherries, that wouldn't have worked? Not nearly as well, ah. because they would have gotten pretty soggy. May I soggy. taste the compote cherry? <laughs> yes, you may. May I? Did you yes. wash your hands? As a matter of fact. Always lobby los manos, Kelly. <laughs> what? Kelly, can I? <laughs> can I have my spoon, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh. You like that? It's tart. <laughs> Kelly is a little but, puckered. But tasty. <laughs> nice, exactly. It is a little puckery. Ain't it? It is. And I'm assuming that the pears are going to give it a sweetness. Oh, they well, will, but I got something else for you, too. Oh, I love when he has something else. Hello. Fiber's <laughs> <laughs> got his own show going on over there. I like this cooking part. Seriously. So this would be served um, for breakfast, then. This is a breakfast dish. But we could use it for, like, I don't know, any other time of day? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. um, probably after a martini and a cigar. Stop work. it! Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. And what kind of um, beverages? That, that's would just be? for breakfast anymore. Okay. So See, there you go. With a champagne and mimosas. Ooh, ideal. See? Yes. I'm... Gary, may I please? You may. All right. I now this, re to defend this recipe here. takes a really long time. It's almost done. Oh, wow. what are you putting on it now? You wanted one minute recipes? Yeah, one minute recipes for those on the Now I'm sprinkling, sprinkling a little demerara sugar. Demerara sugar? D E M E R. There you go. Demerara. <laughs> demerara. So far as you know. It's a raw sugar that it takes is. its name from the colony in Guyana. <laughs> Guyana. 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 God, this is really educational. Far it's more dehydrated so than I to form large crystals. Demerara oh, no. is a wow, natural. crystal is going to be on the show in the with 11 o'clock hour. Maple yes, yes. and molasses. <laughs> now, if you'll take look a look at, at this, folks, you see the golden brown ah, on look the pita bread. And nice. literally, that took what, a minute. I know. See? No, you what if, minute recipes? Could we, could, we put, could we fry the, uh, the pita on a frying thing if we didn't have a grill thing? <laughs> <laughs> Could we? You could certainly could put, you put it that in more in layman's terms. Yeah, because we did this in our kitchen, right? Yes. Okay. But actually, if you really wanted to do it in your kitchen at home, all you would have to do is skip the frying pan. Ah. Just go ahead and put the flame on low on a standard household burner. Put the flame on low. Spritz it with a little bit of oil. Put it on there. Crisp the bottom of it. Turn How it over. How about the burner? What about um, it? Well, what if you only had an electric? You don't have gas. Then you then the, you go to fiber country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can't. let's cut this also, up. I'm also, eat a it. toaster oven will let's work go. very nicely. Toaster See? oven. Oh, that's good. So pears with the juice mm -hmm. in a bowl with yeah. some cherries. Dried cherries. Dried cherries. Yes. And where do we find dried cherries? I got these at a really hard to play, find place called Costco. These are good questions, they are Gary. Excellent, they're excellent questions. I would not no. have known where to find dried cherries. If you want to try a piece of that. Yes, I do. It's I hot. I think you'll find it quite tasty. So and you can eat it like a slice of pizza, just as if you were in New Yorka. New Yorka? New Yorka. Ooh. The crew is expecting a piece of... What's that? Huh? This is Caribbean spice. Oh, I don't like it's that. It's one, one of our uh, hot sauces. It's actually not really, really hot, but real flavorful. It's not really hot? Not really, really okay, hot. Okay, shoot me some. Oops. Okay. <laughs> not a lot. Okay, good. Mm. It's so, actually quite herbal. Do do? That is really good. Is it? All you right, don't get nice. any. Fine, fine. All right, David Thank Biber, you, David. everybody. Right. Thank Thanks, you, ladies David. and gentlemen. Appreciate it. <laughs>